Joining me now, Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer and Founder and Managing Partner, author of There's No Free Lunch, 250 Economic Truths, David Bonson, and joining the conversation all morning long, the National Taxpayers Union Executive Vice President, Brandon Arnold. We're also expecting Christian White, and he'll be up soon. David, what are you watching for this week, particularly with what the Federal Reserve is expected to do? The anticipation of this rate hike, the reduction in the balance sheet is surely the reason that bonds sold off as well as stocks last month. Yeah, I mean, there's not going to be a surprise from the Fed. They're going to raise rates 50 basis points. Uh, they've very well telegraphed that. And then the balance sheet announcement could provide a little bit of a surprise, but I don't expect it. I think they're going to talk about rolling off. Uh, they have so many short dated bonds that they can really bring a lot off the balance sheet in a pretty quick order if they want to. So we know the Fed's tightening. The issue is just how much investors can tolerate the still high valuations. You know, you we're uh, talking about how the NASDAQ had its worst month since the financial crisis. For the month of April in the S&P, this was the worst April in 52 years. And I think a lot of that just speaks to the, the shine has come off these very high valuation stocks. The well, shine has come off all stocks, David. All well, of the... I mean, the, the Dow is down single digits, right? So it, when you look at value stocks, uh, the energy sector's up on the year. Healthcare and consumer staples had a good month of April. So I don't think it is actually across the whole board. It's more like the year 2000, Dagan, where value and the Dow have kind of done something different than the NASDAQ and the more aggressive sectors of the growth market. Well, I'm looking at the S&P 500 for the month, and there was only one group, and that was the staples that were to the plus side. Every right. other sector was down even energy, even materials, real estate, of course, with mortgage rates and interest rates going up, but communication services, consumer discretionary, consumer discretionary stocks lost 13% last month. Yeah, consumer discretionary is the most leveraged sector, and it's the one area that we've really never owned at my company. It's very cyclical, and, and in a bad month, it tends to be much worse. But on the year, energy's still up quite a bit. April, it came down a little. Healthcare, and, and then, as you mentioned, consumer staples were actually up in April. But the important part is that value and growth have now had a huge divergence. And so I just think it's an area where people have to be a bit more selective. Buying the whole index is very dependent on multiples, valuations going higher. Valuations are not gonna go higher anytime soon. Brandon, jump in here. Well, I'm just wondering what you what you think coming out of the Fed. How is that gonna impact things in the short term here? Is, is that gonna have a big splash on the market thing, given that things have been trending in such a negative way? Yeah, no, it, it won't because it's totally priced. Like, people know exactly what the Fed's going to do. I, I don't think uh, Wednesday or Thursday, you know, are relevant days for the Fed. It's more the months ahead. How much can the market take a removal of liquidity from the system? High-yield bond spreads have grown over 400 basis points, but, you know, they've averaged 500 basis points for 30 years. So we're still not even back to normal spreads in the credit market. By the way, that's also where I think the Fed chickens out. I think at some point the Fed ends up saying, okay, it isn't the stock market, it's the credit market. And that's what happened in 2018. They have to get some tightening done here. But at some point, and I think it's going to be in about nine to 12 months, I think the Fed capitulates again. Uh, David, how do you allocate capital given this backdrop? And we, we've got the jobs report coming out on Friday. But essentially, you have an economy that's contracting and inflation running at a 40-year high. And as you pointed out, the Federal Reserve's trying to navigate that. But we also, on the inflation side, we have a shock in energy prices, right? Today is another record day for diesel fuel prices here in the United States. And looking back at history before the pandemic, 10 of the last 11 recessions were preceded by energy price hikes. So how are we not had toward a recession. And, and given what you're saying, how do you allocate money? Yeah, I think that a recession, whether it comes in nine months or in 18 months, is much more likely than it has been for a variety of factors, most of them tightening liquidity removal from the economy. 
But see, everything you just said has a real big net downside to it and also an opportunity. Uh, we're heavily invested in energy, and the one area I would say people have to look at more is the midstream section, mm -hmm. which are the pipelines and those companies that are going to be exporting. Exports are at record highs, and that's despite this administration who's done everything they can to try to keep that from happening. And so crude oil is being exported more because the world needs our oil and gas, Dagan. And so yeah. I want to be invested in things like UMI that are helping produce those pipelines and export terminals to get oil and gas out. Right, especially with Germany finally getting on board, um, willing to try and cut off Europe from Russian oil to That's starve right. Vladimir Putin. So we need to fill that gap as much as we can. David, great to see you this morning. Have Thanks, a terrific Megan. week. David Bonson. Yes.